Um, and today we have a very special guest, one of my favorite people, David Zimmerman is here. And um, David is an internet marketing consultant who specializes in search. He's several years experience working with B2B companies, especially manufacturers. And he started his own consultancy, Reliable Acorn LLC, after working with several agencies. And now he runs um, Curious Ants. Why don't you tell us about that, David? So yeah, Curious Ants is kind of a, a thing that helps people learn how to do SEO while they're doing SEO. So it's not a, a class per se, where you get some information and hope it's still relevant a year later. This is an active plan to kind of guide you through the SEO process and weeding through all the, the baloney and kind of having some coaching going on at the same time. That's what Curious Ants is all about. Fantastic. And what are we learning today? Well, I, I figure I would like, I think everybody needs some more income. And so we're going to talk about how to build recurring income mm. using a free tool from Google called Google Analytics. Wonderful. Well, take it away. We are wrapped with attention. Wrapped with attention. Well, my cat has left my lap. So that's a good thing. That way I don't have a random tail showing up. So yeah, but today we're going to talk about how to build recurring income simply by using Google Analytics. And so right now, I want us all to kind of think about how, how much better life would be if we finally had more recurring income. I mean, what would this look like to you? Uh, you know, obviously it's going to smooth out the ebbs and flows of project-based income. I got a website this month don't have something next month. I might have something the month after that. That's stressful. That's frustrating. It's hard to kind of, you know, it's hard to manage a business like that. So recurring income can kind of help smooth those valleys and those peaks. Uh, solves cash flow problems. If, you know, you, you oftentimes we have to hire other partners or other VAs or something to help us build out one of these occasional projects, well, that money's got to come from somewhere, but we're not going to get the check until it's complete. How do we smooth out our cash flow? Well, recurring income helps us with that, right? You know, and then there's the 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 thing that we all kind of dread, uh, that you know how we kind of keep one eye on the job boards because we just know that next month might not be the month where we have to start applying for real life. If we had more recurring income, maybe we can avoid having to <laughs> keep looking on the job boards and hoping something comes away, you know? Uh, maybe recurring income means you finally get to take a vacation. I struggle with that. I have a real hard time walking away from my business too. But if we had recurring income, maybe we have a chance for mental sanity. <laughs> maybe we need, we will have that opportunity for vacation. But, you know, the thing that I dream most of with recurring income is I can say no to bad clients. Like those clients that you take because you just got to get that income, right? I, I just got to get this. I just have to have another project this month. You know that you're bidding, underbidding, and you know they're going to ask for much more than they have. You know, we, you know what I mean? And if we had recurring income that allows us to say, you know what? Call my competitor. They'd be happy to work with you. So that's our dream. If we had more recurring income, boy, what kind of utopia would we be in? And I hope today you get some ideas that can help you transform your web design, your web development company into something with more stable recurring income. If you have that, if that happens to you, <laughs> email me. I'm going to be very excited. I will celebrate with you. So <clears throat> the answer that I'm gonna to propose to you today for how to get more recurring income is Google Analytics. Hey, how, how on earth is Google Analytics gonna give us recurring income? Well, let me tell you about a couple of the ways. Number one, you can be your client's hero. I want you to be the one that is saving the day for your clients. And that will be a way that you can make some more recurring income. And, and Google Analytics can help us with that. The second way Google Analytics can help us with recurring income is 
frankly, reminding the clients of your value. And so we're going to get into that. Um, but I got to avoid more South Park memes because really quickly, this would be a not appropriate presentation. So we're going to Simpsons because they're much safer than South Park. So there's oftentimes objections when people, especially web designers, web developers are, are told they should add Google Analytics to a website. They say, but you know what, Dave, my, my clients just don't care about it. They're never going to look at it. Why should I spend my time to do it? They're, besides, they're not even going to pay for it. They're not going to pay me for my time to install Google Analytics, they might say. Well, I hope today to convince you that it is worth your time and frankly worth your client's, client's time to install Google Analytics. Um, oftentimes, uh, developers, designers don't add Google Analytics because they're like, you know, it's really outside the scope of my project. My project is to develop a website that works. And I'm not, you know, since you're not being paid for the time, you're going to skip the install of Google Analytics. But I'm going to suggest to you, it really takes less than an hour to do it right. And once you do it frequently, it's even faster because you're just really easy. You know, all to do this, all you got to do is watch Trisha's presentation from last month because she shows you how to install Google Analytics. And, and, and I want a little caveat here. Uh, the, fault, the rest of this presentation is assuming you're using Universal Analytics, not Google Analytics 4. Uh, Google Analytics 4 is not ready yet. Uh, all of these tools won't work with it yet. But so use Universal Analytics, view Trisha's presentation from last time. She'll show you all about the differences and how to set that. But I'm also assuming you take time to install goals on your client's website and track the goals. A goal can simply just mean something that your visitors to the website accomplish that generates income. That might be purchasing a product. That might be submitting a contact form so they can reach you to buy your services. Anything that gets the website visitor closer to making money giving the, the owner of the website money is what we want to track. So we, uh, Google Analytics calls that conversions or goal tracking. We want to set that up too. Uh, and then to do the rest of these, you got to set up one dashboard and one monthly report. And that's it. You can do all that for an hour. And if this one hour you spend for your clients generates more income, it's, it's a loss leader. You can think about it that way. You're giving this hour away so you could have the ability to generate more money. And let me show you how. So the first step, the first thing I should say, Google Analytics can do for you is allow you to be your client's hero. Let's be honest here. We're all friends, right? Well, I know some of you. Uh, we're, we're, if our client's website goes wrong, who are they gonna blame? Even if they hit the button wrong, even if their registrar screwed up something, even if their son who, he knows how to do this, screws it up, who are they calling? They're, they're, they're calling you, right? And, and that is a problem because that's not necessarily money you're gonna get because, you know, you, depending on how you wrote your contract, like you might have to maintain something and maybe that's not priced in. Like that's a terrible situation to be in, but I have a solution for you. I want you to be proactive about website, website problems on your client's websites so you can be your client's hero. <clears> the <throat> first thing you can do once you have Google Analytics set up on a website and once you set up the conversions is set up a simple dashboard. This can be done in Universal Analytics easy. In fact, at the end of the presentation, I'll show you how to literally click a button and put this into your Google Analytics install so you can get this. But 
This is a dashboard. I have this sent to my inbox first thing Monday morning for every one of my clients. And this little dashboard helps me catch problems before my clients even know there's a problem. And that's how you can become a hero because now you are ahead of the game and you figure out something's wrong before they do. You contact them, you say, hey, something's wrong, but I can fix it. And there you go, you got it. Let me just walk through this report a little bit and show you some of the things I use on my dashboard. Uh, zooming in, I, don't, I hope you can see it. I'll, uh, we'll get some size. So at the very top, first thing we wanna see is traffic to the website. We wanna basically look, make sure there's no massive fluctuations. We wanna make sure over, this is a, if you look at the upper right-hand corner, you can see the date. This is a week's worth of data comparing the previous weeks. We wanna make sure suddenly traffic didn't disappear. Boy, you know, this is something that if, if traffic has gone, something has gone seriously wrong and you need to investigate why. I don't wanna just see traffic overall. I wanna see traffic from organic search. I, I do SEO. A lot of your clients, a bulk of their traffic comes from search engines, so keep an eye on it. And then what I've done here is I have the new organic search traffic week over week. Why new organic search traffic and not just overall organic search traffic? Because organic search does a great job introducing people for the first time to a website. I'm not really interested to know that someone's returning to the website. So I'm trying to weed out branded searches, someone who knows by name already and searching. New searches shows me people most likely finding me from other things. And so if there is a significant decline in, in this, I might investigate. So if I'm looking at this report, okay, the traffic, overall traffic is down three visitors, visits, I should say, over the last week, no big deal. But there's a lot of lost traffic from organic search. Okay, I might take some time and just look at that. The next thing I wanna look at is goal completions. Whoops, goal completions. Again, we've set up the conversions. We know that this is what we want the website visitor to accomplish. They wanna contact you for your services, for instance. We wanna look and make sure this is still producing something. Cause that's the whole point of the website. The website is not just a brochure, if it's, if it's right. If it's website is, should be accomplishing something for your clients. And that's what we wanna monitor. We wanna make sure they're still getting leads or sales or whatever, things go wrong. Like I had a client one time, the CEO got involved and started monkeying around on their website and broke their contact form. Oh no, guess what? It took us three weeks to figure it out. They had three weeks, they weren't getting any leads. You'd think they'd notice it, but no, they didn't. Actually, that's the genesis of this whole dashboard is to catch these things. So if I look at this dashboard, there haven't been any attempts to contact in the last two weeks. Maybe I should look into that. You think? Maybe the client hasn't noticed that yet, but if I can look into that, I can be the client's hero. So the next thing I wanna look at in this is sessions. It, it says sessions by default traffic grouping. This is just a way of saying how are the different ways people have found our website over the last week. You can see the vast majority of this is from organic search traffic. Uh, some of it's direct traffic, which simply means someone typed the, uh, the domain name into the browser. Uh, some referral. This is great, not just for diagnosing problems, but diagnosing successes. Like if suddenly there's a big spike in referral traffic, wow, what happened? I had one time, I, I was looking at a similar report for a client, and they had a huge spike in referral traffic. Turns out they were featured on CBS Sunday morning the day before. I wish they would have told me that. Like, that's great. We could have prepped a whole campaign around it. And they got a ton of traffic from the CBS morning, uh, Sunday morning website. Great. That's a success. We want to be able to see that. We want to see what's fluctuating. This also can help us see problems like um, referral spam and stuff like that. But that's a, just another thing we'll look at. 
Let's see what else we got. Oh, landing, oh, I skipped again, landing pages. So we know from an SEO campaign perspective, not everybody lands on the homepage. If we're doing our SEO correctly, people are landing on the most relevant page for their query. So we want to take a look at all the different pages on the website, or at least the pages that generate the most traffic and goals. This can help us to identify quickly, especially if we keep looking at this in trends. What are the most important pages on a client's website? You know, ever had a client call you and say, I want to kill off a page? Ah, yeah, let's make sure that's not a page that's really making them money. This is what this little thing will help tell us. Uh, another thing I like to keep an eye on, and, and honestly, Google Analytics doesn't do a good job with this, but I put it in dashboard anyway, is page speeds. Uh, we, you've all heard all the rumors about page speed and SEO and all that stuff lately. Uh, it's an oversimplification. Uh, Google is interested in the three core web vitals. Page speed is an oversimplification of that because the core web vitals are more user experience as it relates to page speed. However, we want to keep an eye on page speed. Uh, I'm just watching this graph here to make sure nothing weird happens. Did the client upload a 10 megabyte image on a page? Oh, yeah, stop doing that. This is where I find that that's a problem. Uh, another thing I want to watch are 404 pages. Uh, these are just often lost opportunities. I have this in the dashboard because God forbid the client remove a massive section of his, their website without telling us or without knowing that they did it. Oops, just deleted the blog. Uh, we're going to see a spike in 404 pages. So uh, I might be able to catch a mistake like that earlier to help the client. Uh, also, this helps me uh, remind me to put 301 redirects in for pages that got removed so that those pages can preserve the link value that they once had. Um, another item I like to watch in this dashboard is the self-referring traffic. Uh, if you get a visit from your own website, a couple of things could be a problem. Uh, number one, you might have the Google Analytics code missing from a page on your website. Oops, let's fix that. Second problem is, and maybe it's not a problem, but someone could be spending a long time on a particular page. Google by default times out after 30 minutes of viewing a page. If you view another page after 30 minutes, it says a new session, it'll come across as a self-referring traffic. This might be able to help you identify some very successful pages that would be worth investing in. Um, just keep an eye on this as a way of troubleshooting. Uh, I think those of us who've used Google Analytics understand that there's some Google, there's some web spam problems. Uh, Google, some hackers have figured out, it's not really a hacker, just some scumbags, wouldn't even call them a hacker. Some scumbags have figured out how to insert data into Google Analytics uh, to make it look like you're getting visitors from a website, uh, but you're not really. Uh, to get control of this, watching your sessions by hosting is a great way to make sure the, uh, you're viewing the integrity of your website and getting the accurate data. Um, it also helps you see if you're able to do some of the anti-web spam, referral spam issues, how successful you're being. Uh, continuing on. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, this is the, I, I squeezed down. Let's go back to this slide here. No, nope. All right. No, there we go. There we are. All right. So I scrolled down on the page because this dashboard is a little bit longer than even that. Sessions from social referral. Um, I just like to keep an eye on that. How much traffic are they getting from their social media accounts? Uh, I want to just kind of have a little quick way to see that. Are, is something being shared going viral? Uh, I want to know that. Um, it is, are they getting consistent social shares? Is their social campaign even doing anything to help them at all? Or is it all a vanity project? Like keeping track of that is helpful. Uh, I like to watch referring websites. What websites are giving them traffic? Uh, this is really helpful, especially when it comes to the link building thing. Uh, link building is such an important part of SEO. 
I know sometimes people will claim it's dead. It's not, it's not dead. It's a fundamental part of their algorithm. I want to keep track of which websites are linking to me uh, and, and referring traffic. Not that the link is valuable because it gives us traffic, right? The link is valuable because it's a link, whether or not it sends traffic. But this helps me identify maybe new links, maybe new good links that I haven't realized, maybe new opportunities to get a better link or could transform a link that exists into a better link to help my client better. Uh, referring websites is a really wonderful thing to keep an eye on. So this dashboard is really designed to kind of help you be a hero, help you troubleshoot your clients' websites. If you notice something is wrong and you can come to them and say, hey, you removed your blog. It's 404ing everywhere. All those visitors who are coming to your blog are no longer coming to your website. All those links that used to be put into your blog have just evaporated They're in through a 404 error. Hey client, I think you should fix that. Oh, I don't know how to fix it. Well, good thing, you're the designer developer, you built the website, now you can charge them for it, right? That's what this dashboard is designed to do, to help you be proactive to manage your clients' websites so that if there is a problem, you can help them get the solution and provide the value to them that could generate some income for your web design development business. The second thing that uh, a Google Analytics can do to help you generate more recurring income is frankly to show the value of the website you've created for them. Um, just checking my time. Oftentimes, uh, we'll take on a website client and they'll be like, just build me a brochure website. Oh, I hate, I hate that. Like, I don't believe brochure websites exist. Uh, sometimes it's because someone has told this company, you just need a website. Why? Because you need a website. And so you don't see the value of it. I actually have a, a long-term SEO client, been very successful with them over the last couple of years, the CEO said to somebody, oh, I don't know why we're spending money on SEO. It, no one finds us that way anyway. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, if that's true, I don't know why you're spending money on SEO either. But guess what? They got a monthly report. And this monthly report shows very clearly how much they're getting from their website. And that's the second thing I'm gonna to suggest to you. Don't all, not only set up a dashboard that just comes to your inbox to help you catch problems early, but two, set up a monthly report that goes to your clients, whether or not they um, ask for it. Because what this does is it's a monthly reminder to all your clients to say, hey, your website is doing something. Your website is accomplishing something and that what it's accomplishing is something that's helping your business. I tried to create a, a this is a, a Google Data Studio report. It is really pretty simple because it just gets to the basics. Here's the first page of the report. It starts with how many people found us, how they found us and what they do when they found us. All right, so how many people found us? Uh, you got 128 users to your website last month. Is that good or bad? Well, it kind of depends. That's why we, if underneath it, we compare it to the previous 28 days. And we see there's 2.4% growth for this website from a month to month perspective. Hey, that's nothing exciting, but it's moving in the right direction in it. Um, I tried to include a little paragraph here just to explain. Because really what I want this dashboard to be is not just to my contact, but I want my contact to be able to share this with the CEO of the company when the CEO says, yeah, no one's really finding us on Google. Uh, that SEO stuff is, is kind of useless. Here's a report. Hey, CEO, you've got a lot of things to manage. This is a really simple and direct report that you can get. So not only we show how people found us, but or sorry, how many people found us, but how they found us. In this case, we're dividing up the traffic by the source. In this case, 
gosh, almost 75% of the traffic comes from organic search alone. That's pretty good. I mean, who wouldn't want that? Um, and it kind of breaks down. Uh, in this case, it doesn't look like they're doing any social media, but what I really find interesting for all the clients who pay someone to do social media, it kind of holds them to the fire because you can see that maybe some traffic from social media, but it also shows the conversion rate off social media. Maybe these people don't do social media very well, but if I was the CEO of a company, I would want to know that. Anyway, but also what's important about a website is not that it exists. The website should do something for the client. And that's where we're tracking goals and we're reporting goals to them. Uh, this report, it doesn't say it, but the upper right-hand corner is a little drop down where you can select the dates. This is by default 28 days apart from each other. So they actually got one less goal completion than they did the previous 28 days. Uh, actually 75%, so they had three the previous 28 days and a conversion rate. So we're kind of just giving them an overview of what's going on. Now on the second page of this data studio report, I want to focus on SEO. Again, most of the clients, the bulk of their traffic is coming from the search engine. So I want to zero in on that, but I want to make it simple too. So I'm going to follow a very simple format. How many people found us from SEO? What they did when they found us? And what do they do after finding us? Again, so now we're just only showing SEO traffic. The previous page shows all. Now we're zoning in only on SEO. So for instance, we know that we had 102 visitors in the last uh, 28 days, the prior 28 days, we're actually gotten 15, 16% more than we had the previous time. Uh, we got one goal completion that happened sometime around the 14th. Hey, okay. That's better than zero. <laughs> Don't, the point isn't how successful this report is. The point is you can show the value of the websites that you're building for all of your clients by simply setting up this report once and letting it auto send to them once a month, a monthly update of the value of what you built for them. I, I, I want you to send all your clients this automatic, through data studios that automatically send it for you, uh, report telling your clients what you're doing to help their business. <clears throat> Why this will help you generate income? It's because it just reminds them that their website accomplishes something. If they can see this on a monthly basis, maybe a year, maybe more, when they build their next website, they're gonna have a year's worth of data every month reminding them their website's accomplishing something. Maybe they come to you with a bigger budget next time because now they see, oh, this isn't just a brochure site. This website actually does something for them. They are getting customers from this website. So now, rather than nickel and diming you because they just want a website because they were told they have to have a website, now they're gonna invest in their website because they know their website is generating income for them. That's the purpose of this monthly report that you can simply set up through, um, <clears throat> pardon me, through Google Data Studios. So uh, those of you who are a little more cynical uh, might notice that my two examples of setting up a dashboard to become a hero of your clients and, and sending a monthly report to constantly remind them of the value of their website isn't really a recurring revenue method. But what it is, is helping you get more income from what you already are getting. That is gonna be great because now, uh, pardon the tale, now is, uh, it's always easier to get income from existing clients. Like that's just a good business mantra. Re returning clients are always easier to get than new clients. But here's the crazy idea of the day. Recurring revenue can come when your clients 
see that monthly report. They look at this monthly report and they say, you know, we were down 75% from the prior month. We, why did we get three leads last month, but only one lead this month? Can we have some more? Can you help us not just get more traffic, but can you help us get more customers? Well, you might say, oh, I'm a web designer. I'm a web developer. That's not what I do. You need to hire a marketing team. And that's where the recurring revenue can happen for you. If you can then pivot your existing web design web development company or clients into a recurring monthly marketing plan, that is a way for you to get more recurring revenue. That's what I, we, we kind of want clients to see this report and say, hey, you know, that, that's cool and all, but can I have some more? Can I get some more of that wonderful traffic? And not just traffic, because who cares about traffic? Traffic that generates customers? Yes, yes, you can. That is where we can pivot them into a marketing campaign. And that is where you can get a lot of recurring income. I used to work at an agency. We were kind of a boutique SEO agency. Uh, it, eventually they got purchased by a web design company. That's because the web design company was tired of traffic, uh, cash flow problems and occasional group uh, contracts and clients who never paid because the project was never complete. They bought an entire agency, a marketing agency, so that they could have recurring income. And that's, that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Learn how to do SEO, learn how to do some basic web marketing, and now you can have that recurring income that can help you. So. Um, this is kind of what Curious Ants is about. Um, and, I, and now is where I feel a little dirty because I feel like I just totally like him selling you. But hey, that's what this is about. If you go to CuriousAnts.com slash Woodstock, um, I'm going to show you how to get each of these dashboards and monthly reports so you can oh. set them up automatically to go to you or your clients each month. I would like you to do that because I want you to show your clients that you are their hero, that you're looking after them and that their website is doing something for them and maybe it can do a little bit more. So uh, visit the curiousans.com slash Woodstock, get the reports, click on the links, get these things, start sending them to your clients. That is the dealio. That was fantastic. Thank you, David. Thank that you. was wonderful. Does anybody have any questions? We have, do we have, how are, are we on time? Oh yeah, we've got time. Anybody have any questions they want to ask? Let's see. Oh, I think it was very, um, very thorough. So we, we should have this video up in the next week or so. And um, it does refer to Trisha's, um, this also kind of dovetails Trisha's presentation, which should be up later today. So we'll have that. And um, just thank you again, everybody. Uh, let's see. Yes, yeah, super interesting. Greetings from Germany. Oh, we had somebody join us from uh, Deutschland today. Oh. Well, thank you. And we will see you all in the new year. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.